Hey, John Joseph here with Simply Core Fit. So today I thought I would talk about the fact that we are all in our homes surrounded by food and <laughs> snacking is something that many, many of us are doing a lot of like all day, every day. And so I reached out to Kristen Yarker, who is a registered dietitian, uh, because she always has such a great intelligent conversation around nutrition, um, and thought I would ask her, why are we snacking all day? Um, so Kristen, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then um, help us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so happy to help, John. It's great to connect with you this way. So yes, I'm Kristen Yarker, and as you said, I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, when you combine my years of training and experience together, I've been doing nutrition for 25 years. And what I really love to kind of geek out about is it, the intersection of the nutrition science, but also the psychology of our food choices, like why we make the choices that we do. And then also the behavior change science. So how, okay, so now that I understand what the science of nutrition says and why I'm getting in my own way, you know, let's use what the behavior change science shows us as good ways to create healthy eating habits that actually stick. And I uh, work in Victoria, but I see clients throughout BC. And then I have uh, like my YouTube channel and other ways that I provide support to people around the world. Nice. So, so what do we do about this snacking situation when, when we are never far from our food? <laughs> it's so true that COVID-19 has really been like a bit of a perfect storm for creating snacking like all day long. And I'm all about getting to the root cause of the snacking behavior, like of the cravings, and then addressing using techniques that tackle the, the correct root cause. And what I'm seeing particularly happening at town right now with COVID-19 are really two, uh, two key root causes. And so one is emotional eating. And I call it kind of sneaky emotional eating because emotional eating, you know, when we think of that, it's the like, okay, I know, you know, you're super stressed out. It's kind of that proverbial, like, you know, we've seen it in all the comedies of like, the poor girl's been jumped by her boyfriend and she's sitting on the couch, you know, eating a tub of ice cream. Like that's what emotional eating we kind of think of. But I mean, with COVID-19, we're all extra stressed, right? Like everything about our lives has completely changed and we didn't ask for this change, right? Like it just happened to us. And now we're trying to figure out like how to live everything differently in our lives all at once. And that's stressful. You know, and then there's worry about, uh, you know, if, if you have job security or if you have to go out and work in the day and be around all these exposed people. And if you have, you know, family members you're worried about and that like the, the stress is on like, you know, next level. And so there's a lot of emotional eating because of the stress. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, kind of sneaky emotional eating happening for those of us who, well, I worked from home for a long time, but many people suddenly are working from home and never have before. And so when you're working at the at your job at the at the office before, you would have little mini breaks in the day where you would, you know, talk to Bob in the next cubicle over, or you'd go to, you know, the staff room and chat with people, or or you know, at the at the elevator, you'd give you know, chat with a couple of people that sort of thing. And now we're home alone. And so there's none of that opportunity to take a little break from the sitting at the computer working away. And so our brains and our bodies still need that little break. Uh, but we don't have those, you know, we don't have Bob in the next cubicle anymore to chat to. So what we're often, what I'm finding is that a lot of people kind of wander into the kitchen for, because they're just looking for a little stimulation. They're looking for something different than sitting here. And so they're wandering into the kitchen for that, for that stimulation. And so that's what's causing a lot of the cravings. It's not that they're actually craving food. They're just craving a break and a little something different. Uh, and so what I recommend if that, if you're recognizing that as yourself is to, when you're not in that moment, when you're in a different moment, like a calm moment, is to create a, a list of other self-care actions, of other things you can do besides eat when you're in that moment, or if you're noticing the, the emotional eating with the stress going on. Um, because when we're in that heightened moment, we're not good at brainstorming other things to do. We're in automatic pilot. <laughs> but um, what you can do is arm yourself with a list of other things you can do. Uh, it might be, you know, call a friend. It might be go into the backyard and do some stretches. It might be go for a walk around the block. It could be 
uh, you know, draw a bath. I mean, there's going to be as many different ideas as there are people. But write those down and have them at a place that's really ready for you, like whether it's in your phone or maybe like, you know, taped to the fridge. You are not hungry to these other things uh, because then you can be like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to give like some love into my dog right now. That's what I'm going to do for this five minute break at work because I'm not really hungry. So right. having kind of arming yourself with that list because that emotional need, the need for the break is valid but then needing to eat in order to satisfy those needs, that's what we don't want to be using as our go-to. Right. And I mean, really, you have a good point. It's a great time to, to start some new routines. <laughs> um, I know I'm a big post-it note user. Um, <laughs> sometimes that's all we need. You know, lists are, are can be overwhelming if you, um, if you have a lot, but if it's just a little thing on your computer, like, you know, uh, glute stretch because you know you need you know and that might just be you cross your ankle over you're sitting there you know you're just sitting at your desk and you're like hey I'm just gonna stretch my glutes do some rotation that's an easy one do some neck rotations so whatever it is like you said and and uh, it's amazing when we move how mm -hmm. much less we often want to eat too like I find yeah. the more sedentary I am it, it, it really is a, a cycle <laughs> versus if I'm moving a lot, I'm like, oh, I just, I just ran around the block. I don't actually feel like eating right now. So I think a lot of that is just, yeah, you made some great points there. <laughs> that it's, it's not about the food. Absolutely. Uh, and we just find ourselves trying to fill time and, and you know, break. <laughs> yeah, we need to break. You know, I, I, live, yeah. I live in an apartment. And so that's how I often get my my apartment cleaning and my kind of little mini chores done in the day is I take those little mini breaks and I take the green bin and the garbage out and bring it back up. Or I, you know, wash, clean up my bathroom or I unload the dishwasher and reload it. Like that's what I do in those little mini moments of like, I just need a break from the like sitting here typing away. And so I, I get up and I move my body and I give a break and I might like blare some mu music while I do that just to like change the mood. Cause if I've been quiet or like listening to like quiet background music as I've been working away, it's like, no, it's time to blast something like some salsa or something fun and you know clean my bathroom for 10 minutes and then I sit back down and do that and <laughs> we need you we need you in our apartments and our houses that's what we need things are getting done um all right so can you tell us where we can get more tips from you or learn more about what what you know and what you do yeah, I share my tips uh, once a week on my YouTube channel. So that's a great place to start. And it's youtube.com uh, forward slash fight K nutrition. And I think we're going to include a link um, to that here. Hey, John. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. the best place to catch me there. Um, I also have a website, kristenyarker.com. And I'm on Instagram at Kristen Yarker, Facebook at Kristen Yarker Nutrition. But yeah, the YouTube is a great place because that's where I've been most active sharing those those weekly tips. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. That gives us uh, some things to think about. And I appreciate your time. Great to see you. Bye.